All right, welcome back. It's been 37 years since the World Health Organization had declared AIDS a global pandemic, and it remains committed to ending AIDS by 2030. However, new infections and deaths are not falling rapidly enough to meet that target. It's estimated that 37.9 million people worldwide are currently living with HIV or AIDS. South Africa carries the largest share of the global HIV burden, currently estimated at 8.2 million. Now, while the disease is no longer a death, sentence there are still challenges so let's speak to professor linda gail becker uh, from the desmond dutu hiv foundation prof thank you so much for your time and uh, good morning to you i mean earlier on i did mention that when the world health organization uh, of course announced aids as a global pandemic there was then a mission to end aids or at least the number to reduce that number uh, by 2030 what do you make of that target now that we are eight years to go yeah, so we've we've missed the 2020 target, which uh, means that we're, you know, we're either going to have to double down and really try and catch up, or we indeed are going to miss that target in 2030. So the idea was really to bring the epidemic under control in as many parts of the world as possible. Now we do have some examples that this can be done. Um, you know, Botswana is making amazing. Um, if it's in this regard, and I think it's sort of the poster child, if you like, for this part of the world mm. as to what can be done. But a small country, smaller burden, um, but yes, a lot to be done before the eight-year uh, goal is passed. Yeah, and, and where do you think the gaps and the challenges still lie, Prof? Without doubt, we, we're making some way in treatment. Um, you mentioned that 38 million uh, people still are, are living with HIV around the world. We've got about 29 million on treatment. So you, you can hear that we are about 9 million short of individuals who don't even know that they need to be on antiretroviral therapy. But to my mind, the biggest gap is actually in primary prevention. We need to be sure that individuals who are at risk of HIV exposure are able to access really very good prevention. And today we have terrific tools in that regard. We have pre-exposure prophylaxis that is antiretroviral based. And if individuals start pre-exposure prophylaxis, um, uh, they, they can be protected against HIV acquisition. So we know that bringing these epidemics under control need both prevention and treatment. It mm. can't be just treatment alone yeah. and so you know particularly in this country we have work to do in terms of primary prevention yeah and what about mother to child uh, transmissions I mean how are we fearing there yeah so this for me is the tragedy you know I think this is something we can absolutely eradicate with the tools we have in hand today but still 150,000 young people uh, your children uh, were newly infected with HIV around the world in this last year. This is a travesty, you know, this is absolutely something that is in our power. Again, Botswana has shown us that they, we can eliminate pediatric HIV. In this country, we still have more than 10,000 babies born with HIV. Those children will live with HIV for the rest of their lives. So, you know, we have to close that gap with urgency. Yeah. Professor, what about, you know, uh, the uh, cure for HIV? I mean, I don't know if, uh, you know, those who are, you know, living with HIV still have hope that there would be a cure. It seems the conversation has been wrapped more around treatment, prevention, uh, making sure that we reduce that number of transmission from mother to child that we've just spoken right now. But what about a cure? Is that still in the cards? Yeah, I think, you know, the world, um, I think in the last few years, we've definitely seen leaps and bounds in our technology, which puts the possibility of cure within our grasp. But this is a incredibly difficult virus. Uh, we know how we've struggled to find a vaccine. Um, and cure similarly is something that has evaded us to date. Uh, but I think, you know, we're starting to see some strides. Mm. Uh, so we have now got five or six individuals around the world who have been cured of HIV, and that always gives us hope. Yeah. And also just in terms of AIDS-related, uh, you know, illnesses and deaths, how's that number looking right now? We spoke about access to the likes of ARVs, treatment, even PrEP. Um, but when we talk about, you know, AIDS-related deaths, which I'm sure, uh, you know, 37 years ago, that number was high. Uh, where is it right now in 2022? 
So definitely this is where we have made strides. So antiretroviral therapy is incredibly powerful. Just a single pill a day can keep the virus under control and really restores longevity for the individual who lives with HIV. But it's important that they are tested, know their status and are on the antiretrovirals. These have to be taken every single day in order to ensure that viral suppression. So, you know, we, we do have the ability to turn this into a chronic disease, but still every day we hear of individuals who did not know they were infected. They come into hospital very ill and many of those individuals still die uh, of uh, the immune acquired disease known as AIDS. Yeah, and I appreciate you, of course, talking to us about this, Professor uh, Linda Gale Becker, knowing that there's progress being made. We may have missed our target for 2020, but it seems that if we continue, of course, uh, with conversations as this, uh, then we can continue, of course, to keep that number down. Uh, Professor Linda Gale from the Desmond Dutu HIV Foundation, thank you so much for your time this morning.